Narita Boy left me conflicted like few other games have before. Its jaw-dropping neo-retro 2D aesthetic constantly treats your eyes to beautiful 80s themed backdrops, wildly imaginative character designs, and wonderfully fluid animations, while a truly excellent synthwave-inspired soundtrack perfectly underscores not only the action, but also the emotional moments of its surprisingly poignant story as well. But as far as actually playing it is concerned, Naruto Boy is at best a serviceable action platformer, with hollow exploration filled with constant backtracking, simple puzzles, and combat that never really evolves in ways that make tougher enemies any more fun to fight. And at its worst moments, well, let's just say that thankfully it's only at its worst for a fraction of its 6-7 to seven hour length, because otherwise, I'd need a whole lot more aspirin. The short version of the overcomplicated and jargon-heavy story that takes place inside the actual digital world is that you play as a young boy who's dragged into a video game, called Narita Boy, after its creator's memories are stolen by a malicious program known as him. That's not the whole story though. The real meat and the really good part of Narita Boy's story is communicated as you unlock the stolen memories and play through 13 really well done flashback sequences that chronicle the life of the creator all the way from childhood to the present. Each time I unlocked one, it felt like a gift I couldn't wait to unwrap. These bite-sized story sequences are easily the high point of Naruto Boy as a whole because this story is an emotional one to watch unfold. They tie together the digital and physical worlds in a way that's rather clever. As far as combat goes, Naruto Boy looks more impressive than it actually feels to play. There are some really great animations, hits are impactful, and the way enemies die is super satisfying to look at. But the big problem is that there really isn't much to your arsenal of moves. You start out with a basic 3 hit sword combo, a close range shotgun blast, and a powerful beam attack. That's an alright base, but none of the abilities that you gain as you progress ever make engaging with combat any more fun. Most are geared towards dealing with a specific new enemy type, like using a shoulder bash to knock away a shield, rather than being a versatile tool that alters how you approach combat as a whole. As a result, combat gets stale early on and stays that way. The one exception to this stagnancy is the dashing thrust attack that actually fits nicely into Naruto Boy's repertoire of moves as a way to hit a bunch of enemies in a row, in addition to being able to remove armor from a specific enemy. Of course, it's one of the last techniques that you get, so I didn't really have enough time to really enjoy using it in combat. And while there are an impressive number of enemy types throughout Naruto Boy, they're almost all disappointingly simple. They all just have a single attack and a single way for you to avoid that attack. Similarly, eventually you gain the ability to toggle between red, blue, and yellow auras, which makes you deal and take more damage against enemies of the same color. But while it's great to have an extra layer of choice to think about in combat to break the routine of it all, it fails to make fights any more fun since you pretty much just kill enemies in one hit when you're matched with their element. It just never rises above that base level of what combat should be in an action platformer like this, leaving it relatively one note the whole way through when compared to evolving games like, for example, Ori or Guacamelee. Platforming and exploration follow the same trail as Naruto Boy's combat. They never really cross that threshold of being anything more than just fine on a fundamental level. I eventually grew numb to the spectacular backdrops because I had to run back and forth between them over and over again. Aside from the 13 memory bits, the highlights of the campaign are where each area of Naruto Boy is capped off with a big event. Surfing on a floppy disk and transitioning from skidding along the water's surface to jumping back onto solid ground is good fun, as is the power fantasy of transforming into a giant robot and utterly smashing everything in your way. But there is one that I need to talk about in detail, because it is the closest I've ever gotten to rage quitting a game that I was assigned to review. You've probably seen this style of level a hundred times in other games. Think bit trip runners, side scrolling, obstacle dodging, just without the rhythm element. But here, you're moving extremely fast and the obstacles that you need to jump over are kind of hard to see. Even more frustrating is that when you boost to avoid taking damage from enemies, you move so fast and it pushes you so far to the right side of the screen that it becomes practically impossible to react to whatever's coming next. The result is a two minute long blurry obstacle course that largely comes down to memorization, much like that infamous Battletoads level pretty much everyone hated since 1991. 
But while Battletoads has that hardcore appeal of being a difficult game all the way through, Naruto Boy is otherwise a very easy game, and this awful level comes out of absolutely nowhere. It's made even worse by the fact that the mechanic meant for getting your health back, which is boosting through a string of enemies, often doesn't work, and has you still taking damage for seemingly no reason. It's headache inducing, it doesn't work as intended, and it almost completely ruined Naruto Boy for me as a whole. Find the sign. There's so much to love about Naruto Boy's style, which makes its gameplay shortcomings all the more sad to see. Its 2D sprite work, animations, and soundtrack are among the best I've come across this year, and the story that plays out through its unlockable memories is one that I still think is worth experiencing even despite the mediocre combat and exploration that make up the bulk of the campaign. In any case, it desperately needs a patch to adjust its borderline broken speeder bike style level. For more, check out our reviews of Aaliyah and Cyber Shadow. And for everything else, keep it here on IGN.